Hey guys, in this episode we're going to tackle the age-old problem of outlining hair. Hey guys, welcome to Kelvin Designs. My name is Calvin in Design and that's why it's called Kelvin Designs. Click right here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get all these tutorials just as they come out on YouTube. And click right here to subscribe to my newsletter and get all the goodies, raw files for this episode and every other tutorial that I do for free. So in this episode, we're actually taking a lesson out of my course, the Masking and Extraction Masterclass, which you can see right here. And uh, in this course, I basically go over all the techniques of outlining, selecting, so that you can do composites and whatnot. And uh, this lesson is specifically on how to outline complex elements such as hair perfectly. It's really simple, but you have to know how to do it. So let me show you. All right, let's take a look at uh, the refine edges. So the start, let's uh, right click on here and open with, let's do a Photoshop and it goes through the camera raw. Right now I'm just gonna keep it really uh, the defaults and here we go. All right, uh, I use Command Plus to zoom in a little bit and we just wanna get a, uh, a basic selection here. So I'm going to actually use the uh, quick uh, selection tool here and I'm actually going to zoom out just a notch and I'm just going to add the background here try to get a decent selection all right nothing too detailed because that's what we'll use the refine edges I use the alt key as I showed in the uh, previous video uh, I'm essentially redoing uh, somewhat rapidly the uh, the last selection I did in the last video so something like this and then I'm going to add all this down here okay and I picked it up all the way here nice clean edge over here okay and I got you see there's still gray in here but right now all the uh, all the soft edges is fine I what I want to keep I wanna make sure I have the basic selection around here okay so uh, I'm gonna actually invert my selection command shift I or if you want to do it through the menu you go to select uh, select menu and you have inverse right here and uh, it's Control shift i on PC. All right, now, when you're within any selection tool, whether it's the lasso, the marquee, or quick selection, magic wand, or anything like that, here you have this little button that says Refine Edge. And we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I click it, and it brings up this little menu here, which is the Refine Edges tool. And what it does is, uh, as the name suggests, it is something that um, perfects the edge of your selection. So as you can see here right now, it's a very hard edge, doesn't look good, all right? And you can actually uh, view this in different modes. Right now it's on black, and I try to go on something that's the least forgiving, meaning something that looks the worst, because that uh, means I can really uh, get the best type of selection. In some cases, I actually put a green layer behind my layer, and then I do uh, on layers right here, but since this is a background, there's nothing there, so that that really won't work. So I'll do on white. Uh, on black is 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 nicer, but it's I don't see as clearly. So let's just do that. And uh, now what you want to do is here you have this uh, brush uh, right here. So you have uh, really two. You have one that erases and one that brushes, and you have your size over here. So right now the size of this brush is pretty small. What I wanted to do here is basically brush over everything that is uh, semi-transparent, meaning there's holes in here, there's holes in here, but this brush is gonna, it's a little too small. So let's go ahead and make this a little bigger, um, even bigger than that. It's a pretty high resolution image, so it's gonna require a bigger brush. So here we go, I'm just gonna go here and brush, and let go, and you'll see that it already starts. It says, oh, well, here, look, I found a bunch of uh, pixels that I think should be transparent. And you keep doing that over here. I usually do it in one one uh, brush stroke over the whole thing. And everywhere where there is a little bit of hair and transparency, see, look at that, it's magic. All right, and I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. Anybody who's uh, been doing outlines like I have, since the mid 90s can testify that this is this is pretty incredible um so um anywhere where i see a little bit you know i'll go and fix it up um the refine edge tool for me is really just for this i do not really like using it for hard edges as you see down here um while you can you can manipulate edges and so on it's really 
that is not why I use it. And um, I recommend other methods that we will get into. Uh, but for now, let's just take a look at the hair and outlining that hair because this is a lot of detail that uh, using uh, doing this manually somehow which is it's, it's pretty basically impossible uh, let's take a look on black see how it looks looks pretty good I got a few so here you see, I can see okay well here I got a little bit should, should clean it up in here as well okay so uh, even though the uh, white was uh, less forgiving the black still reveals a few things that I would not have seen otherwise. So I go back and forth between black and white to make sure that's uh, really nice and clean. And like I said, sometimes I will actually have a green layer, which is actually pretty nice. Um, you can do the overlay mode and that kind of shows you, well, look at that, I'm missing this hair. So let's try this. Boop, got that, okay. And uh, I go back to on black, pretty clean. I mean, if this is actually going to be black, I would have to adjust the colors. Uh, because this was taken on a gray background um, and that means that some of the gray is still showing and if it was black well this would be darker so um, you would actually have to darken the semi-transparent pixels for it to actually uh, work nicely and we'll get into a uh, into a little more advanced blending uh, uh, for extraction meaning when you do this kind of selection, how do you make it merge perfectly no matter what the background? And we'll get into, uh, that's a little more advanced, um, um, and it's in a few videos a, few, a little later for now. Let's just get into some basic, let's finish this uh, refine edges, and, and, and I really want to see how I can get as maximum detail on this. And, and on a white, I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible. All right, let's uh, take a look at a few of these uh, um, options. You got the smart radius. What this means is right now it has a radius of it's calculating how far in or out can I go on the selection. And smart radius means that you can basically, it'll change. It's not just doing the same radius all around. It says, well, here it needs to be finer, here it needs to be thicker, for example. And as you can see, when I turn this off, well, you actually didn't see it. Uh, it was when I turned it back on, suddenly some of these fine hairs showed up. All right, then you have the smooth. Smooth is basically, uh, I'm going to bring it up so, so you can see what it does. It, it, it softens all the edges, and it's not good for hair. It's really not good for hair. It's good for a sharp edge, like a, if you're outlining a pear or something like that. You, you know, the curves need to be nice and round. Like, I mean, like, look at his sweater. His sweater looks better. And if I take it back, the smoothness, and now it's all jagged. So... Smooth, I do not recommend for anything that's hair, and I really use the Refine Edge tool for uh, fine selection like hair or fur or, or you know, animals and so on. So very fine detail. Uh, then you have the feather, which basically feathers, meaning it softs as if you did a Gaussian blur on the selection. And again, I don't really recommend. It's basically you're softening it, so you're getting rid of all your detail. I don't. I prefer to have um, as much detail as you can. If you cannot have detail because there's a lack of contrast, meaning his hair is black and the background was black and you've somehow, you can't get away without softening it, then you have to feather a little bit. And then contrasting basically means it's going to have a stronger uh, edge between what's selected and not. So as you can see here, there's no fine details, too high a contrast. So again, I leave that as low as possible. The shift edge, however, I, I like this very much. This basically says I'm going to eat into my selection or I'm going to expand my selection. Um, generally speaking, I have this on zero and it's a pretty good uh, compromise. And I, if, if anything, I usually eat in a little bit. I'm like, you know, there's a little too much. For example, if we look on the black and uh, go back to... Uh, zero, you'll see that there's some gray spots in there, right? Or, or se semi-gray spots. If we eat into these pixels a little bit, you see that more we go in, the more it's taking up uh, those pixels. However, we are losing quite a bit of information. And you can see it here in the white. Um, I prefer to keep this as close to reality as possible, meaning zero. And if you need to, because if you have a black background, adjust this in a different way, which like I said, we'll get into a, a, a little later. If this was uh, photographed on, say, a green background, uh, as, a, as a green screen or something like that, you would still see green in the hair because it's not, doesn't 
take out the color. It's trying to find intelligently the edge, but you would still see green reflections. So you have decontaminate colors. And because we're on a gray background, you shouldn't see a difference at all. Now, something to note, however, when you do decontaminate colors, it creates a new layer with the layer mask, as opposed to traditionally a selection. Meaning when I hit OK here, it's going to take me out of this. I'm still going to have my background, but I'm going to have the marching ants, marching ants that basically tell me I have a selection. So that is, for me, the optimum. As opposed to a new layer um, that now has con like a change in color and so on. All right. Um, and, and, and as we go along, I'll show you more examples so that that becomes a little clearer. But just so you know, I want the what the result I want from this tool is a selection that I can now have as a layer mask, which I'll get to in a second. All right, so uh, here we go. I have the uh, the all, all the refine edges is is good. I'm going to hit OK, and here we go. My marching ants. I have a selection. Okay, so I haven't really gone into uh, layer masks, and and it's very important. The difference between a layer mask and a mask, uh, traditionally masks are held into channels. So if I went here and said, select, save selection, and I call this Steven, hit OK. Here we go, I get a mask in my channel, which is actually another channel, also called an alpha channel. And it's called Steven, because that's what I just called it. And it didn't change anything in my layers, all right? If I take this selection, and I hit this little layer mask button, all right, if I, uh, it says add a mask if I uh, stay over it, it's gonna convert, it did a couple of things. It converted my background layer into layer zero. Background layers cannot have transparency and you cannot actually manipulate them um, in many ways that you can a layer. So I converted it to a layer and then it added a mask here. And it the good thing about adding a mask to a layer mask as opposed to erasing is that if I change my mind, I say, you know what, I want that background, I'm going to disable this layer mask, none of these pixels are actually gone. It's all there, so it's non-destructive. So I'm going to enable this layer mask, and now let's say uh, I want to add an, uh, another layer, put it below this layer, and I'm going to put some green in here. I'm going to go ahead and fill, and let's do foreground color, hit OK. Okay, so I got this green layer in the background, and I have Steven in the front here. Let's just rename this layer Steven. And uh, you actually can't really see the gray. That green really pops up. But there's a few areas where you're like, oh, you know, it looks like he has green hair here. So we can still adjust this. The good thing with uh, the layer mask is that I can still adjust it. Um, I'll get into a little more uh, uh, layer mask adjustments a little later. A little later because uh, it's a little more advanced. And for now, I want, I want you to understand the simplicity of quick selection, refine edge, and now I can put anything in the background. Uh, let's do a, 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 an easier example. Well, it's not necessarily easier, but a little more interesting. Let's do a gradient here. And I'm just going to create a gradient here. I have a weird sort of a sky and desert background. Uh, anyway, just to give you, uh, just to show you how clean this selection process is. I mean, this is really good. Um, you will definitely, uh, in the upcoming videos, see a more um, advanced procedure uh, where you can get even more detail and even better blending. Uh, but for now, this is actually pretty cool. All right, so that was the uh, refine uh, edges. And one last thing I wanted to show you uh, is, so I'm going to actually uh, create a, another layer here. I'm just going to Command-J, which makes a copy, and hide this one. I'm going to apply this layer mask. So now I've now taken out the, uh, the information. And um, if there was, so I'm going to go here and fill it with black. So I hit D for default colors, and then uh, option delete to fill. Okay, you see how there's a little bit of white here, and well, we don't actually have too much white around here, but if you do have sometimes a little one pixel white, uh, you can do what's called matting. And that's actually pretty simple. You go into layer, 
go to matting, and you have three different options. You have defringe, remove black mat, remove white mat. So if you were to have a little white pixel around here, you, you could go in here and say remove white mat. And you see how it just kind of got rid of all the, the white that was kind of uh, making the blend very harsh or very difficult. Now it did, uh, it did uh, take some of the detail away, but I mean, it, it got rid of all that sort of white matting. All right, and let's go back into the history. Uh, another way you can do this is defringe. Um, so here, matting, defringe. And essentially, I'm saying cut in about one pixel. Well, in this case, one pixel. Let's do two. I could click OK. See, it just cut everything in. And it's similar to, uh, I'm going to just load the selection real quick. Um, it's in the refine edges. Remember how we have the shift edge? That defringe is very similar to cutting in here. So uh, I'm basically cutting in by one or two pixels. Here it's percentage, but in the defringe, it was a pixel. So uh, deselect that. I'm not going to keep this. I'll bring this back. And uh, there you go. Just as a quick note uh, for some of you who are, who are um, not used, this is not the default. I should probably have uh, said this a little earlier. This is transparent. And by default, in Photoshop, in your preferences, you have the transparency grid, and um, and it looks like this. It probably looks like this in your computer if you're following along. Um, I actually prefer to have white uh, or none. Um, this kind of distracts me a little bit from the fine detail, and I I know by looking at here I can see I already know which is transparent or not. So this is a personal preference. Um, if you prefer to have the transparency grid, you know, you can go ahead and do that. I just wanted to uh, make a note of it because by default, you do have the transparency grid. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked this episode and I hope you learned something. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button on YouTube. And uh, it really helps me out if you share it on Facebook or Google+. And if you do want me to do a tutorial on something specific, leave a comment below and I will do it. I'll see you in the next episode.